Greetings and welcome to Coaster Wars, where I pit two similar roller coasters together head to head in an effort to decide which is best. Today we have two world class Intamin launch coasters similar in style, look, and elements the mighty Jurassic World Velocicoaster at Universal Orlando's Islands of Adventure and Park Warner Madrid's huge 2023 edition Batman Gotham City Escape. In this challenge, I'll be comparing the most similar elements, theming, and other key aspects of the ride and giving a point for each. The winner is the coaster with the most points. So does Raptor beat Bat? Let's find out. Round 1 – Queue Line and Theming Both coasters have a lot to offer in this department. Velocicoaster takes us through a bit of a cattle pen, but once past the Raptor Pack statue, the queue line is excellent, with standout moments including life-size animatronics of the Raptors, as well as the incredible Raptor chase sequence, where dinosaurs chase the actual coaster train. Crazy. Gotham City, on the other hand, begins as an innocent tour of Wayne Manor, which takes a turn when Joker takes control of the systems and floods the study with laughing gas. Of course, Batman was was prepared though and a secret passage guides riders into the back cave and through to the underground station to escape. Both very good, but Velocicoaster gets the edge for those standout queue line moments. And when we come to theming during the ride experience itself, well the first half of Velocicoaster being set in the Raptor paddock definitely gives it the advantage here. Round 1 goes to Velocicoaster. Round 2 – First Launch and Inversion So both coasters begin with a launch into an inversion that's deliberately taken quite slowly to maximise the hang time. Velocicoaster launches you into the Raptor paddock and up into an Immelman loop, while Gotham launches you out of the station and into a slow corkscrew. Both are really fun starts and it's difficult to pick between them, but I think Velocicoaster just takes its round with its greater sense of anticipation before the launch and the inversion itself just hits a little harder. Round 3 – The Second Inversion Velocicoaster's second inversion is almost a mirror image of its first, with a dive loop which is perfectly fine and does its job, while Gotham City Escape throws in a reverse sidewinder, adding some spice into proceedings, slowing you down at the crest before whipping you to the right and upside down. Two inversions that have a lot in common, but Gotham City Escape wins this round quite comfortably for me. Round 4 – The Main Launch while Velocicoaster features two launches and Gotham City Escape has three, it's the second launch on both roller coasters where the ride hits its top speed, and what I consider to be the main launch of the ride. Velocicoaster's second launch is almost legendary at this point, accelerating riders from a moving speed of around 35 to 40 miles per hour up to 70 miles an hour through the Raptor pens, which provides a fantastic spectacle from the queue line. Gotham City's is no less punchy and still brings a strong sensation of speed, but at five miles per hour slower than Velocicoaster and without so much fantastic theming, this round has to go to the Raptors. Round 5 – The Top Hat Following their main launches, both of these roller coasters zoom up into a top hat, the highest points on both of these attractions. With Velocicoaster, you're banking left and up, gliding over the crest, slowing down slightly, but still gliding over quite cleanly with some lovely airtime off the drop, particularly in the back. Gotham City takes you kind of up behind the top hat and back on yourself, banking left all the time, and delivers some fantastic ejector airtime as you reach the peak. The trim brakes stall you at the top before the drop launches you out of your seat for a second time. Both are brilliant top hats, arguably two of Intamin's finest, but Gotham delivers so much airtime here and wins this round. Round 6 – The Stall One of the standout inversions on both of these awesome roller coasters is their stall element, a section of track which holds riders upside down for some crazy hang time mixed with a dash of weightlessness. With Velocicoaster this element comes around halfway through the ride straight off the top hat and is taken at reasonable speed and delivers some good hang time, but there is a sense that they're saving the best inversion until last. Well that's exactly how Gotham City Escape treats their stall, as a centrepiece element to round off the experience, and it does so by producing some of the most insane hang time on any roller coaster. Seriously, look how long that train is upside down for. With lap bars, Gotham takes round six. One stall you shouldn't do, however, is stalling on hitting that like button. So if you're enjoying the video so far, then that thumbs up goes a long way. And please consider subscribing to the channel for the regular theme park content. It's free, it only takes a second, and you can always change your mind later. Round 7 – The Whippy Inversion As well as slowing things down for some hang time, both of these coasters know when to whip their riders through an inversion too, launching you with sideways ejector in the process. Velocicoaster does this over a lake, with an element so iconic that it gets its own name, the Mosasaurus Roll. This Heartline Roll is taken at so much speed that you feel like you're going to be torpedoed to the bottom of the lake, and it's the highlight of this wonderful attraction for many people. Gotham, meanwhile, tears you through a quickly taken corkscrew over a pathway, framing the buildings behind, and it's also a really good inversion. But it's up against the Mosasaurus roll. Come on. 
Round 8, airtime moments. Along with speed, hang time and whip, these two headline attractions also deliver the airtime. That sensation where your bum leaves your seat and your stomach is left in the sky. Velocicoaster features numerous little bumps of floater air during its first section, with the strong moments of ejector reserved for the second half, namely the S-Bend hill over the water and that little hill before the Mosasaurus roll. Gotham City may have slightly less airtime overall, but each of its moments are so aggressive, presumably aided by those shorter trains. The air hill over the pathway is fierce, and the dive under the bridge and the bump on the overbank all deliver way more airtime than you'd expect. So for the pure ejector insanity, this round goes to Gotham. Round 9 overall pacing. And the final round is all about the pacing, how each layout traverses its track, glides through its elements and builds throughout its course. Velocicoaster is a two-act story, with the slower section through the Raptor Paddock followed by an injection of pace and a frantic second half, culminating in arguably its best element for an awesome dip and bank back into the break room. Gotham's pacing is a bit more all over the place, a launch, a slow inversion, another launch, a stall over the top hat, and it totally works for the ride, but my personal preference is with Velocicoaster coaster and the way it builds throughout the experience then leaves you breathless as you hit the brake run. Gotham has that spike ending which does throw in a rollback which is cool but it also feels a little unnecessary and slightly takes the edge off the finale of the ride. So that makes Velocicoaster the winner edging out Gotham City Escape 5-4 overall. Do you agree? Truthfully, these are two world-class roller coasters that every enthusiast should be riding at any opportunity. And oddly enough, they both feature in my top 10 and you can watch that list countdown up on the screen now. If you have any suggestions for future Coast Award videos, then leave them down in the comments. I've been Paul, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.